Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for Big Brother Canada 12 towards the end of week five and the end of the pre-jury phase. And this has been a pretty interesting week. I feel like we are going to see some pretty interesting gameplay here. And we even saw like the house sort of become divided once again. And I feel like I can't complain too much with how this week has gone, all things considered, but we'll get to that soon enough. But there are 11 people to talk about, and as always, no more time, let's get right into the video. So starting off at number 11, we have the latest boot from this week, who is neither Todd nor Tola, but instead it is Vivek, who ends up getting massively screwed over here by this twist of the executive veto, which obviously we had known about coming into it, and we saw playing out here where it ends up being this reverse safety chain where it ends up being Victoria getting the executive veto there. And due to her like seeing that Todd might've been better for her game moving forward, she decides to use the veto on Todd that allows Viva to go up instead as sort of like someone on the outs, not really someone that is useful for the Alliance at this point, which I think is very unfortunate in the sense that he got massively screwed over here. Now, like I said last week, I didn't think he was in that great of a position even before this, where obviously he is in the spot to where he is the next target on the board, but I still think he got screwed over and I do feel bad for him with the game that he played here, even though the game itself was pretty bad. Again, targeting Dennis and backdooring him was pretty bad. And I felt like through that, he didn't really have much of a shot there, but obviously he's now out of the game to where he's here at number 11. And with that, there are 10 people left in a game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think they are to win the game based off their current game position. But number 10, we have the person who is the most likely to be voted out on the eviction. And here we have Matt. And again, this was a pretty fun turnaround where it didn't seem like Matt was going to be the target coming into it. Where even though there were rumblings early in the week where people like Victoria and Kayla were gunning hard to have Matt backdoored, it didn't seem at first that Avery was going to go through with it as she seemed pretty resolute in making this an easy week, not really taking a shot, and in general just taking out Elijah. And that opportunity really opens up after Tola wins the veto, which forces Avery to have to pick a new nominee, and Mac just kind of fell into her lap there. So again, it is kind of unlucky that Tola won the veto here, though at the same time, I don't think he's going to stay or even though he has votes on his corner, people like Anthony, Tola, and Lexus, I don't think there'll be enough necessarily. And I feel like a flip is pretty unlikely unless someone like Victoria flips at the last moment, which to be fair, I mean, I wouldn't put it past Victoria if she does flip by the end of the week, considering that Goose was already on a radar. But I still feel like Matt would be more beneficial for these women as it would have essentially forced the likes of Anthony to have to work more with them and giving Anthony fewer opportunities to undercut the women moving forward also forces Lexus into her corner as well. So I feel like at this point, I feel like even Victoria should recognize the strategic benefit of taking out Matt, especially when it's already apparent that the shot's been taken. So I feel like at this point, Matt's pretty screwed in the game, unless something crazy happens in the next day to where he's here at number 10. Now moving on to number nine, and we actually have the other person on the block right now. And here we have Goose. And it does seem like for the time being that Goose is going to stay as now the target is shifted onto Matt. And it does seem like the women are going to be on his side to take out Matt. But at the same time, I feel like it has nothing to do with what Goose actually did. It was more so due to things around Goose that is causing him to be spared here, especially when he was the consensus target coming into the week where Avery wanted to target him as a way of making it an easy week. But even on that, you have his whole blow up last week after the veto where he recognized that he'd been tricked by Victoria, but he ends up spilling this throughout the house that caused Victoria to want to target him coming into it. He also messes up the safety chain during the executive veto, where by choosing to eliminate Tola first, he pretty much guarantees that the Victoria side will win the executive veto and decrease the chances that his HOH is successful. And sure enough, he does fail to take out the people he had put on, on the block to begin with. You also have him being pretty willing to go back on the block despite him being in a pretty bad spot. And he didn't even seem like he knew that he was a target coming into the week, which is also pretty bad. In general, I just don't really have a ton of faith in Goose moving forward, where it does seem like the Hot Chocolate Alliance seems to be the core power structure at this point, and I feel like with the stuff happening in the game, he's not really involved much within it, and again, even though he's probably going to stay this week, I don't feel like he has much prospects moving forward. It wouldn't shock me if he's just sniped out as an easy target in a future week, very similar to what he should have been this week. 
So at the end of the day, I'm just not feeling great about Goose, which is why he's here at number nine. Now moving on to number eight and sort of similar to Goose, we have someone who is probably not going home this week, but they are still on the outs. And here we have Tola, who does end up winning the veto here, where even though he was put up as the pawn, he manages to win the veto there, which is pretty decent on paper. But at the same time, he still wasn't entirely safe to where had Goose won the veto, he probably becomes a target there. But even moving forward, he is pretty primed to lose a number here in Matt, which considering that he does seem closer to the Anthony side is pretty bad for his game. And again, considering the fact that he is this lightning rod that the women don't seem to like that much. And with him not really having many relationships beyond that, I just don't feel that great about Tola either. And with him losing a number this week, I can't really have him any higher, despite the fact that he did technically save himself. And despite the fact that he did win a comp, so at least he is showing his ability there. But beyond that, I can't really have him any higher than number eight. Now moving on to number seven, and we have someone who I did want to put a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, I'm still worried about their target moving forward. And here we have Bailey. And this is technically a good week for Bailey, where she was one of the people pushing for the map back door, and she does get her way here. And again, I feel like this is all pretty good for her on paper. She is getting her way here. She is opening things up for the women to have more power within the game. But I still feel like she's a big target in the game, and it wouldn't shock me if, if the Anthony side were to win HOH that they would just use her as a relatively easy target there. But even beyond that, I feel like even though the women have been propped up as these big players in the game and people that are getting their way here by taking out Matt, I still feel like Bailey is the least likely to get towards the end game as she's the only one of these women to not be part of Hot Chaka, which I feel like will continue to be a force in the game moving forward. And it would shock me if that becomes a key alliance that gets towards the end game, despite the division that we are currently seeing within the game. And I do worry that that opens things up for Bailey to be targeted. So again, I still worry about Bailey's short-term prospects as she is seeming to be a target at this point. But again, I do recognize that this was a good week for her. And if she is able to continue to undercut the likes of Anthony and Victoria, really feed into this civil war that's brewing, there is a shot that she could improve her position there. But I still feel like she's a big enough target and in enough danger in the future to where I have her here at number seven. Now moving on to number six, and we kind of have the opposite of Bailey, someone who is technically having a bad week here, but someone who I still think will not be targeted in the future. And here we have Alexis. And again, this is a bad week for Alexis. She is about to lose Matt, who was her showman up to this point. And this has kind of been brewing for the last couple weeks where people have been talking about how Lexus have been getting too close to Matt and how in general, like it's not really good for their games. So I do it the falter because of that. But at the same time, I don't think it's all bad as I feel like she did do some good work this week in terms of bonding more with a lot of the women by sort of ensuring them that she's not in Matt's pocket. You also have her eliminating Matt during the chain of rejection during the eviction, which also built her some good favor. So again, even though she is losing Matt and she is losing an option for her within the game, I still think she is coming out of this in a better position than what she was before. Or now that Matt is leaving and now that she has done at least some work to ingratiate herself with the women, I do feel like that will put her in a good enough spot to where she won't be targeted. Now again, there's still the question over how active she's playing and how really well positioned she is within things. But I feel like the fact that I have more faith in her to slip through the next couple of weeks compared to Bailey was enough to have her here at number six. Now moving on to number five, and we have the biggest jump here compared to last week, but we do have Todd. And again, I'm surprised that Todd is still in the game here, considering that he was on the block last week. And it does seem like by the time of the eviction that he probably would have been voted out had the executive veto not come into play where it does seem like the votes would have been there to take him out, which is pretty bad. And even this week, you have people like Anthony that would have preferred him to go back on the block, only for him to not do so. But at the same time, he is becoming more of a piece within Victoria's game, where Victoria specifically used the executive veto on him as a way of building up a number for herself. And I do feel like at this point, it's kind of working out for him, where through this whole map move and weakening Anthony, I do feel like that puts Todd in a much better position than what he was before, where at this point he is working more with the spicy V side of things. People like Avery and Kayla seem to be willing to work with him more. And again, considering where he was last week, I do feel like that's a massive improvement for his game. And I feel like in general, that will probably put him in a better spot there. Now, at the same time, there still could be some danger for him next week, where particularly if Anthony wins HOH, I could see him like being a victim of that. But I feel like if he's able to get through these next couple of rounds and really sort of fly under the radar as like the Civil War starts to brew, 
I do feel like that could put him in a pretty solid spot to where if he can get through the next couple of rounds, he could potentially be in a spot to where he's not being targeted as much. He could also start to go on a comp run. I think there's definitely some upside here for Todd that makes me feel more confident in him compared to before. Now, how active he's playing, again, he's not been the most active player, but I do feel like this could be a turning point for him starting to play more actively. And I think with the opportunities before him at this point, I do feel better about him than I'd have before, which is why I am going to elevate him here to number five. Now moving on to number four, and it is the same top four as last week. However, I will admit that it was a lot tougher to rank them this week, as even though I feel like there are definitely some pros with each of these people, I also think there are plenty of cons, especially with one particular person, but we'll get to that soon enough. But at number four, I did decide to go with the person who is technically in the worst spot right now, but I still think this person could recover, and here we have Anthony. And I did drop him compared to last week. However, I do have to acknowledge that losing Matt here is pretty bad for his game across several fronts. I mean, one is the fact that Matt was clearly a number for him. And by losing Matt here, it does kind of force him to work more with the hot shotgun side of things. And in turn, that's probably not the best position for him to be in, as I feel like if we get down to the hot chocolate final five, it does make him a pretty massive target there. So I think there's that to consider. Also, some of his social play this week wasn't particularly great, where he would call out people like Avery and Victoria for hanging out with the women, only to be called out by saying that he hangs out a lot with Matt and Tola, which makes him look like a massive hypocrite. So again, I think there's definitely some bad things that have happened with Anthony for this week. But at the same time, I don't think he's being directly targeted by the likes of Victoria, where even though like we have seen them coming at odds with each other over this whole map play, I don't think the map play is necessarily designed to target Anthony immediately, where I feel like it's more so to weaken Anthony without necessarily going after him. I don't feel like he's directly being targeted. And there's still a world where Hot Chocolate is the design final five, where even though I don't think he's that well positioned within that, he is still like set up to be taken deeper into the game because of that. However, again, you never really know where this whole civil war is going to go. But even beyond that, I will also admit that some of it's also my faith in Anthony as a player. I think there is a chance that he's still able to escape through this, where we literally saw him not playing super well during week one, but is able to recover because of that. I don't think this is necessarily the death of Anthony's game. However, it's still like not an ideal spot. He's still not getting his way. And I think some of the ways he's been acting has not been particularly great. So I did have to punish him for that to a degree, though we'll have to see where things go from here. But for now, I will leave him here at number four. Now moving on to number three, and I also debate this one to a degree as I'm not really sure what to make of this person's decision here. But number three, I did decide to go with Avery. And I know early in the week, people like were crapping on Avery for wanting to make this an easy week by targeting Elijah and Todd. However, I don't think that's necessarily bad for Avery's game as I think Avery was pretty well positioned within the house here and going for an easy target wasn't necessarily that bad for Avery's game. However, I also will acknowledge that her willingness to later go on with the map plan is something that could build her some favor with the likes of her allies in Kayla and Spicy V and obviously it is beneficial in the sense that it weakens Anthony and sort of forces him to have to work more with the women's side of things which I think is pretty good for Avery's game. Now there's still the question over how big of a target she'll become because of this, considering that she was the HOH that drew this line in the sand. So I do worry about her in that regard. But again, outside of that, I think she played this week about as well as she could have, all things considered. And I think there's still plenty of upside for her game moving forward, which is why I do have her here at number three. Now moving on to number two, and I actually decided to go with the other returnee here, and that person is Victoria. And the thing about Victoria is, I've seen people online talking about how she's a great player and how she's playing the best game in the house and how like she manipulated this entire situation. And Really, I don't necessarily agree with that. I still think Victoria is a pretty sloppy player and she didn't really do much this week to really change that perception. Again, she's playing a very similar game to how she played on season nine, except this time she actually has allies and people that are willing to put up with a lot of her antics here. Where first up, you have her decision to save Todd here, which I do think on paper is pretty positive for her, except it does sort of alert Anthony to the fact that she is playing like this more individualistic game. And it does start this tension that we start to see later on the week between them. 
You have her later deciding to backdoor Matt, despite the fact that Goose is someone who at one point during the week talked about targeting her and she made it clear that she wanted to target him only to back off. So again, she is a very flip floppy player here. Now, again, I do see the rationale in her wanting to target Matt as it does weaken Anthony. It does force him to consider other options here. But at the same time, she does it in a way that makes Anthony know what she's doing. And I think it is setting up this civil war between the hot chocolate faction of things that will probably play in the coming weeks. And I think there's definitely more of a chance now that she could be targeted compared to Anthony, if I'm being honest. I think that if Victoria's game goes downhill, that I wouldn't have a lot of faith in her to recover. I think the good position that she's in at the moment is largely because she has allies and because she's such a big player and because a lot of these players just seem kind of scared to go after the returning players, which I think is a feature on a lot of these captain seasons. But I think at the point where people like Avery start to recognize that people like Victoria needs to be taken out. I do feel like she's probably gone at that point. And I think beyond that, yes, she does get her way this week, but it's largely been how she's been playing all season. I feel like she's not necessarily the greatest player we've seen. It's just that things are working out for her compared to other people. So at the end of the day, my opinion of Victoria's game has not really changed. But again, she is technically getting her way this week. She is having some agency within the game, which was enough to have her here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Big Brother Canada 12 right now is Kayla. And again, I feel like Kayla is someone who can definitely come out of this week without having the target on her back that Victoria might, or even someone that like Avery might, considering Avery was the HOH. But Kayla was still very much involved in this plan to backdoor Matt, which I think is pretty impressive. And I do think it's a move that benefits her greatly. And I think with this Matt blindside going through and with this civil war brewing, I think that definitely leaves Kayla in a pretty solid spot moving forward. Now, again, there's still plenty of things in flux here, but I think considering where we stand in the game at the moment, I feel like Kayla is probably the most likely person to come out of this unscathed, mark my words, but for now, I will have her here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Really helps out with the channel. Now I'll be back again next week to update the Power Rankings again, so you can forward to that. I'm covering other shows such as Survivor 46 and The Amazing Race 36, so you can expect weekly Power Rankings of those shows. I'm on Patreon, so if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way, but for now, that is the video. See ya.